From Chicago, the Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Well, you ought to be in Summerfield. The drizzle that started Friday afternoon and threatened to spoil the weekend turned suddenly to snow last night. Great feathery flakes that floated down and spread a white blanket of silence over the whole town. The kids were up early this morning, pelting each other and leaping and rolling and wallowing in it. When Gildersleeve rubbed the sleep from his eyes and looked out upon it, one thing came instantly to his mind. And apparently, it had come to others. Hello. Hello, Chief. Gildersleeve. Say, have you looked out your window, Chief? Do you see what's out there? Well, sure. Well, of course. We'll never get a better snow for it than this. He did, eh? Good for Floyd. Well, tell him to line up his cousin's sleigh. Tell him to pile some nice, clean straw in it. Oh, and tell him... What's that? <laughs> Don't you worry about the girls, Chief. You know who's in charge of the committee on arrangements? Yours truly. <laughs> Can Willow Weaver come out and play? Rock Morton. <laughs> you look like a snowman. Yes, yeah, still coming down. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Say... Uh... Look there, the delicate tracery of those bare branches. Yeah, branches. Say... And the fresh fallen snow so blue in the shadows. And where the sun catches it, the way it shimmers. Yeah, shimmers. Say, Eve... Oh, but come inside. Take your coat off. No, I better not. It's all over snow. And besides, I've got a lot of other calls to make. We'll step into the hall anyway. It's cold out here. Well... Oh, that's all right. Say, Eve, how'd you... Well, I will take this scarf off. Christmas present. <laughs> Keeps getting in my mouth. <laughs> See, Eve, how'd you like to go for a sleigh ride? A sleigh ride? Oh, I think that would be wonderful. Where on earth would you get a sleigh? Well, Floyd Munson's cousin's got one. He delivers milk in. Oh. Well, I think that would be fun. Fun? You bet it's fun. Country's so beautiful right now. I'd love to drive out and see something. Well, you wouldn't see too much. We'd be going at night. Uh, tomorrow night, that is. But why go at night? More fun that way. Oh. Well, I've never gone on midnight sleigh rides. Oh, come on, Eve. Everybody else is going. Oh, we wouldn't be alone, then. Alone? Oh, well, in that case... Uh... Sure, you'll have plenty of chaperones. All the jolly boys will be there. Oh. Well, I don't know... They're all nice fellows, Eve. Every one of them. Of course, some are nicer than others. But we keep an eye on him. Well, I Gosh, don't know. it wouldn't be a sleigh ride without you, Eve. The fellows were all counting on you to be the, um, the queen of the winter carnival, so to speak. Is Mr. Peavy going? Peavy? Well, if Mr. Peavy goes, I'll go. Listen, Peavy wouldn't miss it. He'll go if I have to drag him. Then tell your friends the queen is honored and accept with pleasure. <laughs> Glad you could make it, Eve. See you tomorrow night. You'll call for me here. I'll be here with bells on. Well, I know you don't know me very well, but gosh, Miss Fenwick, the boys were all counting on you for um, queen of the sleigh ride. And now if you let them down... Well... That a girl. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Well, your mother wouldn't have to know, would she? Uh, we uh, wouldn't have to drive right up in front. We could stop down the block a little way. See, the boys are going to be awfully disappointed. They were sort of counting on you to be the queen of the sleigh ride. Well... <laughs> Eight o'clock tomorrow. Say, you haven't got a friend, have you? Hi, 
Lloyd, Chief. Hi, Commissioner. Only you two making all this noise? I thought you had the whole Metropolitan Chorus up here and a couple of dogs. Oh, oh no, Commissioner. Only us dogs. <laughs> yeah, just killing time till the rest came. Oh, where are they? What's the matter? Listen, we got to get all our arrangements made tonight or there won't be any sleigh ride tomorrow. Well, Peeve ought to be along soon as he closes up. I don't know about the judge. I heard he wasn't feeling so good. Yes, how is the judge? Has anybody heard? The old goat, what's the matter with him? Well, he's got the flu or the pip or something. Oh? Come to think of it, I haven't heard from the old gent in two or three days. Kind of a relief, as a matter of fact. Uh, nothing serious, Chief. Well, I don't know. I suppose we could call him. Uh, who's that? That you, Peeve? Wait a minute, here comes Peavy. Maybe he'd know. Good evening, gentlemen. Well... All present are accounted for now, except Hooker. Say, how is the judge, Phoebe? Have you heard? Yeah, how is he? I'm afraid Judge Hooker is a sick man, gentlemen. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Really? I mean, really sick? If, how sick, Phoebe? Yeah, is he bad? Well, I'm not a physician, gentlemen. We know that. I don't like to make a diagnosis without having seen a patient. Even if I did, I couldn't because as I... Hey, I'm not a physician. We know all that, P.P. But how is he? Well, as I say, I haven't seen the judge. I, I only know what I've heard. Well, what do you hear? Well, I didn't hear this from Dr. Pettibone. He's out of town. That's right, Floyd. I know. I give him a going-away haircut. So, evidently the judge or his housekeeper called in Dr. Frieden. Never heard of him. Who's he? He's a new doctor, a young fellow. He lives over on the other side of town. Don't he ever get a haircut? Yeah, never mind that. Oh. Yeah. What did he say, Peavy? Well, I really don't know him well enough to be too inquisitive, but I'll say this for Dr. Frieden. He may be young, but he writes a nice, legible prescription. Never mind how he writes. What did he say? Yes, tell us, Peavy. Well, you know, doctors, they don't say much, but... I was wrapping up his prescription, and I asked him casually how Judge Hooker was. And he shook his head. Oh, gosh, that's bad. Of course, I don't know whether he was shaking his head over the judge's health or his disposition, but what I go by is this. He wrote out a pretty stiff prescription for the old gentleman. Yeah? Penicillin. Penicillin? Oh, that's usually a last resort, isn't it? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. They use it. They use it to treat pneumonia. I know that. Yes, Chief, they do in certain types of cases. Oh, the judge is no chicken anymore, fellas. Wouldn't take much to carry him off. Gosh. And to think only last Saturday he was sitting right there in that chair looking just as natural. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Floyd. Gentlemen, I'd like to make a motion, if I may. Yes, yeah, Chief. Go ahead. In view of the uh, circumstances, I think we should postpone our sleigh ride tomorrow night. I don't think... Hey, but what about the girls? Evie's right. I don't think we should hold our sleigh ride without the judge. Besides, our hearts wouldn't be in it. Well, what about the girls after we went and asked them and everything? Floyd, it wouldn't look right. Yeah, maybe you're right. It's been moved and seconded that we postpone our annual sleigh ride scheduled for tomorrow night and that our lady guests be so notified. All in favor? I nominate Gildersleeve, a committee of one to disappoint the girls. No, wait a minute. Well, you started it. You invited us. Fellas, I'd like to make a motion of my own, if you'll give me a chance. Uh, go ahead, Chief. I'd like to move that the judge's empty chair there be set apart as his exclusively with a suitable plaque. Uh, well, uh, Chief, I think we ought to wait on the plaque. Huh? Till we, you know, see how things turn out. It's a nice thought. Well, but... maybe so. I was just thinking what Floyd said. How he could remember him sitting there. Like it was yesterday. I guess we all can. And I thought it would be nice if we did something. Well, gentlemen, why don't we do something the judge can enjoy? That is, if he can enjoy anything now. Like what, Phoebe? Well, it was, you could send him some little token, something useful, maybe. Like or... a hot water bottle? Floyd. <laughs> flowers. That's what you send the invalid. Yeah, flowers. Uh, why don't we send him some flowers? Mm, roses are nice. The judge is always puttering around among his roses. They smell nice, too. He probably couldn't smell them. Head's probably stopped up. You're, you're always finding fault. All right, so it isn't stopped up. Maybe they got him in an oxygen tent by now, for all we know. 
Maybe he can't smell a thing. All right, shove the roses in the tent with him, but stop raising objections. Well, uh, Okay, okay, yeah, he likes yeah. roses. He likes them. Give him roses. Just so it ain't lilies. Floyd, I think that last remark was in bad taste. Ah, well, he started it. I don't think the judge would want us quarreling over him before he's dead, even. I don't think that's such hot taste. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> what I mean is I think the judge would want us all to be jolly boys and carry on, just as if he was, well, as if he was here. The chief is right. That's the way I'd want it. Yes, sir. I wouldn't want my friends all sitting around here with long faces. Let there be no moaning at the bar when I put out to sea. You know what I think we ought to do, fellas? I think we ought to have a song. Now you're talking. Oh, gentlemen, do you think we really ought to? One of the judge's favorites. The judge would want it that way, P.V. That's right. The judge would want it that way. Well. You know what the judge's favorite is? Yeah, but who's going to take the solo part? The judge usually takes that. That's why it's his favorite. Yeah. I will take the solo, Floyd. You? Why you? The judge would want it that way. I oh. think he's right. Give us a chord, Floyd. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. It's not the same without the judge. No, it's not. I remember. It's just like he was sitting there. <laughs> Gentlemen, I, I move we adjourn before we make fools of ourselves. Great Gildersleeve will be back again in a few moments. I suppose, Mr. Lang, you have some interesting things to tell us tonight about your stay here in Chicago. Yes, and one of the high points of my visit was a trip today through the parquet margarine plant, one of the many modern plants in which Kraft makes delicious country sweet parquet. Oh, I'd like to hear about that. And I'll try to give you a brief word picture. As you enter the parquet plant, you see a row of gleaming white tanks containing huge quantities of fresh, sweet, pasteurized skim milk. In this room... Cultured skim milk is held at carefully controlled temperature, constantly protected to safeguard purity and freshness until it is blended with highly refined vegetable oils and other wholesome ingredients. This bright, clean room is typical of all sections of the parquet margarine plant. They're as spotless as a housewife's best china. If you could see the care and skill lavished by our craft people in making parquet, I'm sure you'd appreciate even more the wholesome goodness of this popular spread for bread. Reason, too, why you'll want to look first when you shop for this spread of craft quality. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve and his niece and nephew have been to church, it being Sunday. We join the family as they shuffle homeward through the snowy streets. <laughs> Leroy, I want you to shovel the snow off our front walk the very first thing after dinner. After dinner? After dinner. Today? Today. This is Sunday. I don't care if it's... Be sure and do it the first thing Monday morning. Okay. Maybe by Monday it'll be melted. I'm hungry. I hope Bertie's got a good dinner for us. Yeah, me too. That's one thing about going to church. Gives you an appetite. Uh, and then there's the spiritual values. Get the snow off your feet, my boy. Bertie wouldn't want you tracking it all over the floor. You don't have to kick the house down. Mmm, I can smell the dinner. I'm starved. Uh, yes. Well, we can just sit quietly till it's ready. Can I play the radio on? It's an educational program. Educational? A football quiz. Yeah. We'll just sit quietly, my boy. 
You might go up and wash your hands. I washed them for church. I guess you'll do then. <laughs> Maybe I should call up and find out how he is. Yes, why don't you? Don't like to phone his house at a time like this. Still, Ask if there's anything we can do, Wonky. I will. What could there be? Doesn't matter. There might be some little errand. Uh, hello, Mrs. Fogel. Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. I don't like to intrude at a time like this, but at the same time, being such a close friend. How is he, Mrs. Fogel? I see. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> well, I thought I might stop by this afternoon with some flowers, but if you think not, I'll come by then. Thank you, Mrs. Fogel. What's the word, Uncle? Not good. Poor old horse. Well, I want you children always to remember him. Remember all he's done for you. What? The interest he's taken in you. An interest which has gone far, far beyond the call of duty. He's been a good friend to all of us. A friend and an inspiration. What did Mrs. Fogel say? Well, you know how hard it is to get anything out of her. Oh, she's such an old crepe hanger. Uh, uh, I wish I'd given him a Christmas present now. What did he give you? Nothing. <laughs> we made an agreement not to give each other anything this year. Naturally, I didn't think he meant it, so I got him some pipe tobacco. But then he never gave me anything, so I took the tobacco back to Peavy's. I'm sorry now. Well, if he gets well, you can give it to him. I will, too, by George. I surely will. I'm hungry. Hey, Bertie, when is dinner? Leroy, I will not have you shouting at Bertie. Just a few minutes now, Leroy. I found that we've got to learn to communicate with each other quietly around here. I've been meaning to speak to Bertie about it, too. Bertie! Leroy asked Bertie to come here for a moment. Go out in the kitchen and ask her. Okay. One of the signs of a well-run household is a quiet, peaceful atmosphere. Remember that, Marjorie. I will. Was it something you wanted, Mr. Gillsleeve? I've been meaning to speak to you about a habit of yours, Bertie. Well, kind of a family habit, I guess. Leroy shouts all over the house, and you shout back at him. You holler a little yourself, aren't you? Well, when everybody's doing it, I'm liable to slip once in a while. Just uh, kind of watch it, will you, Bertie? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilfrey. I didn't know I was bothering anybody. He's worried today, Bertie, about Judge Hooker. Something the matter with the judge? He's not expected to live, Bertie. Oh, my land. They put him in an oxygen tent, giving him transfusion. Hmm. <laughs> transfusion? If the doctor knows his business. Poor old judge. He's been a good friend of ours, hasn't he, Bertie? Yes, sir, he sure has. But I ain't surprised to hear he's sick. A bachelor eating in restaurants all the time. Man's got to have home cooking if he wants to live a long time. He's got a housekeeper. She only comes in two days a week. Yes, sir, man's got to have home cooking. That's probably important, Bertie, but the judge has pneumonia. Home cooking, that's the answer. Yes, sir, home cooking. Yeah, now Bertie's all upset. You see how fond everyone is of the judge? Bertie's always liked him. Sorry I ever called him an old goat. Not that I ever meant anything by it. He was a fine man. Fine man. I want you children to try to be like him. Remember that. You mean I have to be a lawyer? No, no. Just be like him. His fine, manly qualities. Okay. How can Marge be like him? She's a girl. <laughs> try not to be stupid, Leroy. The judge had great human qualities. He was manly. That's for you. He was also upright, kind, honest, straightforward. That's for both of you. For all of us. Okay. Say, did I tell you about Piggy and the manual training teacher? <laughs> Piggy was in manual training and he ripped his pants on a nail. So he... Leroy. <laughs> Think of Judge Hooker. Well, gosh, I only... That will do. Just sit with your hands folded till dinner is ready. Get inside, Floyd. 
try to keep your voice down, will you? Why pick me out? I've been around. Shut up. Have you rang the bell yet? I'm cold. Oh, stop whining, Petey. For heaven's sake, let's think about the judge a little, shall we? That's right, fellas. Let's think about the judge. After all, he's the one that... He's the one. Jiggy, she's coming. Uh, good afternoon, Mrs. Fogel. We're a little group of the judge's best friends. We've come to pay a little visit and bring him some flowers. Yeah, some flowers. I don't know if you can see him or not. You'll have to ask the doctor. You can come in and wait until the doctor gets here if you like. Thank you. You gentlemen will just leave your coats here in the hall. Yeah, I think I'll keep mine on if you don't mind. Yeah, me too. We won't be hanging around very long. And if you'll just come in the parlor. Yeah. Watch the carpet. Oh, well, we might as well. Well, it seems awful quiet. Where is he, Mrs. Fogel? His room's directly above. Oh? Well, we'll just sit here. Has there been any change in his condition? No. No change. I see. Uh, what is his condition? He just stays about the same. Maybe the doctor can tell you something when he comes, although he never tells me anything. That's a bad sign. Yeah, uh, afraid so. <laughs> well, you gentlemen will excuse me, I... Have some work to attend to. Yeah, go right ahead, Mrs. Fogel. We, we don't want to be any bother. That's all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. It just don't seem possible, does it, fellas? Right, John. About the judge. Why, well, only a week ago, he was his regular old self. Lively, cheerful, with a twinkle in his eye. You know. Yeah, he looked okay to me last time he was in the shop. Five days ago. He was in for a trim, and he climbed right up in the chair just as... Chipper. I saw him Wednesday, and I thought he looked a little peaked. Then again, maybe that's just hindsight. Just think, Peavy. I guess you were the last one that saw him. Oh, no, he wasn't. I saw him Wednesday. I bet I saw him after Peavy. Well, what time did you see him, Commissioner? Uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon. When did you see him, Peavy? About four. Well, now, wait a minute. On second thought, I believe I saw him around 4.30. I thought you said three. I saw him at 4.30. I was the last man that saw him alive. <laughs> he came back to the store again around five. Why don't you stick to your story? You're just trying to get some glory out of this. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Fellas, fellas. The judge is laying up there, and how do you think this sounds? She's right. Well... Him laying up there and us... Hiding down here. Well, I didn't mean any disrespect. Well, neither did I. The last thing I'd want to do. After all, I guess I was closer to the judge than the rest of us. Like ducks you were. I've known him 20 years. I've been cutting his hair 20 years. A Bobby gets to know a fellow pretty well. Well, I've known him 25 years, personally and professionally. And I've been selling him liver pills for 30 years. You... <laughs> well, under the circumstances, that's nothing to brag about. Anyway, the judge was practically a member of my family. One of the finest men I ever knew. Yes, sir. What a heart. Good old Horace. Yeah. He was true blue. Well, you never know when your time is going to come. Oh, we're here today and gone tomorrow. Tempest Fugit. What'd you say, Peavy? He said Tempest Fugit. That's French. It means time flies. <laughs> oh. Yes, that's right. What the... Hey, what's going on upstairs? The judge, he must be delirious. Mrs. Fogel! Mrs. Fogel, where the devil are you? It sounds like he's having a spasm. Where the devil is my chicken broth? Uh, Mrs. Fogel, quick, the chicken. Uh, the judge. My golly, I don't know why I can't have my broth on time. Here it is, 3.15. Well... What the dickens are you fellas doing here? Glad to see you. Hooker, we thought you were dead. I mean dying. Well, I'm not. What's more, I can prove it. I'll be darned. Who started this room? Yes, where did it come from? Peavy, he's the one. You told us he was at death's door. Well, no, I didn't say that. How do you like that? He's no sicker than I am. Of course not. Say, how about a game of cards? Come on up to my room. Oh, my eye. We can call up the girls again and have our sleigh ride. Yeah, good idea. Tell us, please. There's nothing the matter with you, you old goat. You spoiled our sleigh ride in the first place. Come on, fellas. But Gildy. Here's some flowers, Judge. So long. Yes, so long, Horace. Go on back to bed. Dave, look at 
that beautiful moon. Isn't it beautiful? It certainly is. And the snow always looks so lovely at the moonlight. Yeah. Say, aren't you cold, Eve? Oh, no, I'm perfectly comfortable. Just thought you might snuggle up a little. I'm cold. You are? Oh, I'm freezing. Well, goodness. I wouldn't want you to freeze today. <laughs> At a girl. <laughs> oh, Mr. Manson, you're terrible. Oh, now, I ain't so bad, am I, Peavy? Floyd, you're terrible and I'm cold. Well, you should have brought a girl. Hey, maybe we could sing a song and warm Peavy up. How about a song, Chief? Good idea. Start something, Commissioner. Well, let's see. Any of you girls know Aunt Dinah's quilting party? I'm afraid I don't. Me either. Why don't you boys sing it? We'll listen. Okay. The Jolly Boys Quartet. In the sky, the bright stars glittered. On the banks, the pale moon shone. And was from Aunt Dinah's quilting party. We were seeing Nelly home. We were seeing Nelly home. In her home. We were seeing Nelly home. In her home. And was from Aunt Dinah's quilting party. We were seeing Nelly home. Sing Nelly home. Say, fellas, you know something? Well, what, Commissioner? I'm glad Hooker couldn't come along. We sound a lot better without him. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were seeing Nelly home. We were seeing Nelly home. home. We were seeing Nelly A few months ago, I had an opportunity to talk to the young women in our audience about the need for student nurses. That need is still very great. A nurse's training course offers a splendid opportunity for young women to make for themselves a lifetime profession. Salaries are good, there are interesting opportunities for specialization, and most important of all, nursing offers an opportunity to be of real service to one's fellow man. Women between the ages of 17 and 35 who are high school graduates or who have college credits, may apply for entrance in any of the nearly 1,300 accredited schools of nursing. You may obtain full information at your nearest hospital, nursing school, or from the vocational guidance counselor in your local high school. We urge all you young li women listening to consider again making nursing your life work. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Eve Goodwin is Francis Robinson, Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. Uh, just a second, John. Friends, today, January the 15th, is the opening day of the 1947 March of Dimes campaign. The March of Dimes, as you know, supports the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. I'm sure all of our listeners are going to be helping again this year. Thanks, and good night, everybody. This is John Lang saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting all of you to listen again next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Now it's really true. You can make real rich, velvety smooth ice cream in your refrigerator. Just ask your grocer for the craft product called Frizz. F-R-I-Z-Z. -Z. One package makes six generous servings of ice cream and very economically. You simply add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. Add fruit juices or flavoring for variety. Frizz contains plenty of fine cream and milk made by a process that retains marvelous freshness of flavor. Get frizz from your food dealer tomorrow. Surprise the family with homemade ice cream tomorrow night.